3.2.8 The Guru's Word and Mind We should keep the Guru's Word in our hearts and let it absorb into our mind. Our goal is to get rid of ego and our egotistical thoughts and to clean our mind so that the Guru's Word can work its way into the deep recesses of our mind and heart. The Guru's word is a transformer and as it transforms, spiritual progress will get faster and faster. We will be able to follow the Guru's word more easily and begin to feel the world and understand the game of life properly. The magic of the Guru's word. When we study the Guru's word, we can see its miracle even in today's world. An honest seeker of truth might still have doubts. There's nothing wrong with having doubts and there's no shame in this. These doubts are natural and a normal part of a spiritual journey. Guru's word dispels these doubts for an honest seeker and answers all of his questions. Spiritual seekers continues on their progress by leaps and bounds if they hold on to the Guru's word. The master is the word and the word is the master. The spiritual seeker will be free of all bondages through the Guru's word. The Holy Congregation Human Nature Human nature is programmed according to the type of company in which it has grown up. The environment surrounding a person and their company has the effect of taking the mind and training it and the effect is unmistakable. There is an old saying, Jesi Sangat, Desi Rangat. The types of people you spend time with, so you will become. Those who live in the company of bad people inevitably take on some of their traits. Pious people, good people, generous people, honest people similarly affect those around them. In the same way, that good and bad company matters. Keeping the company of saints matters. Those who keep the company of saints are shaped in a way that the Father Creator wants. Keeping company is a great force and a law of nature. And like every law of nature, it can be used for positive or negative. It's obvious that the company you keep plays a great role in your life and so it's vital that you seek the company of virtuous people and stay away from bad company. This is essentially the rule, the law of life. This is essential for the spiritual seeker who wants to stay on the right path. Good company can be found in three places. Books, podcasts, audiobooks, YouTube videos from great saints, good company in person, and keeping company with our Father Creator. It is important to remember that good company, like that of good authors, and good company in person, is a means to an end, and that end is to have company of our true Father. The company of books. Any number of books, and I would add podcasts and YouTube videos now available, for the betterment of our thinking and character are available. It's best to 
view, purchase, consume media according to the level of your mind and spirit so that it helps your spiritual development. The study of this media has lost some of its appeal as other forms of media has taken precedent. Now there's an abundance of content on the web and pious, virtuous content is not as abundant. Good books have lots of uses. Good media has lots of uses. In fact, in some ways, it can be more useful than good company. If we read or consume media by the best authors, we get a glimpse into the life of that person. We get our questions answered and we can search for answers to specific questions. Their entire spiritual experience, their entire life can be condensed down to a short recording or a couple of hundred pages in a book. It's important to note that cynical people will pick holes in everything. And this is a barrier in spiritual progress. One who is good and one who finds good in everything becomes good and sees beauty in the whole universe. When we study books and media by great authors, we keep out of the negative and we become more positive and good and virtuous. Another important feature of books is that they bring us into contact with great men of the past and from around the world. Good books and media are providing a great source of spiritual wealth for many people. Company of Good Souls The charisma of good souls instantly impacts the mind. In many cases, it transforms our life. Many people's lives have changed through contact with great souls and good sangat. The point of having company with these people is to elevate us. Living, glowing contact with good people creates ecstasy and peace in our minds. I have been keeping company with saints and greet them with devotion, respect and affection. Good company can easily resolve spiritual problems and help us progress. The downside of books and media is that we have to search through them to find answers. However, with the company of good souls, we can ask them our questions directly and openly. Also, we get a glimpse of what an ideal person should be like and what their lifestyle is like. That motivates us and encourages us to become more ideal and moulds our life in the same way. Swami Vivek Anand says that the soul can only receive impulses from another soul and from nothing else. We may study books and media our whole lives and may become very intellectual, but in the end, we find that we have not developed spiritually at all. It is not true that a high order of intelligence or intellect is required for spiritual development. In studying media, we are sometimes deluded into thinking that we are being spiritual. But if we analyse the effect of study on ourselves, we will find that at the most, it is only our intellect that has got any benefit. This insufficiency of media for spiritual growth is the reason why, although every one of us can speak most wonderfully about religion and spirituality, when it comes to action and living a spiritual life and spiritual experiences, we find ourselves 
woefully deficient. Difficulty in recognizing a true saint. One particular difficulty in recognizing a genuine saint is people cannot distinguish a real from a fake. Saints shun the limelight and publicity. To be able to associate with them, and we have to seek them out. And, and the everyday person is not prepared to go to such extents. No wonder so many gullible people are taken in by imposters. A true saint may not be dressed like one. They may be a householder living and working in society whilst having reached the highest spiritual states. Association with them is the way to genuine peace of mind. Who is a saint? A saint is one through meditation has realized his father, his creator. There's a world of difference between a saint and a philosopher. The saint is at one with the creator. The philosopher is not. He does not experience the Creator, his Father. His drive to understand the Creator creates more thoughts and he spreads his views. The saint's words come from his heart and his experience and create peace in those around him. He sees God face to face and speaks of what he experiences. Knowledge and Intuition Paul Descent in his well-known book says there is a great difference between knowledge and experience. Similarly, C. Lanyon says experience is so far from knowledge that there's no possible way of comparing the two. I've been associated with great souls who have through meditation realized the creator, their father, and recommended others to find God the same way they have found God. Whoever wishes to meet and see and hear our Father must associate with saints. Association with great souls creates the urge to realize God. Love begets love and those who have love can pass that love on to others. How to associate with a saint? We must never try to test a saint. Neither should we enter into debate or argument with a saint. The association should be one of guidance and we should ask them questions related to what we are struggling with in our spiritual development. The thirsty sparrow goes to a stream to quench his thirst and flies back grateful. I have followed these rules in my approach to associating with saints and have derived much benefit. 4.3.6 The Congregation It is an excellent daily practice amongst the Sikhs to congregate in Sangat with Guru Granth Sahib Ji, to sing verses from Guru Granth Sahib Ji, to sing God's praises, this practice is conducive to spiritual development. In the congregation, there are some devotees of God whose presence purifies and uplifts everyone around them. Daily congregation at a spiritual place is useful both for worldly affairs and from a spiritual viewpoint. Since this tradition is rooted in the lives of Gursikhs and has been handed down from generation to generation, I need not talk about its utility. The caveat to the congregation is that in the presence of Guru Granth Sahib Ji, only spiritual topics should be discussed. If there is slander or gossip, this cannot be sung. 4.3.7 
association of the soul with the infinite soul. When the devotee experiences light dawning within, with the guidance of saints and Guru Granth Sahibji, he should start to look within instead of wasting his energies outside. He should find joy and peace within. He is joy and peace that association of saints and media used to give him, he will find that within. As this introspection grows into a habit, he frees himself of the outer world and is at one with his soul within. When the spiritual seeker has done this for some time and has made it a routine, he will start to have visions of God from within. He sees and, and finds a new home within himself and he dwells within it. Many such people who experience this spiritual state go into the congregation. They have nothing more to gain from the out outer world. They're there to help others. Association with God frees them of the need for others' company. They experience an ecstatic joy in the vision of God from within. As a climax, they are united with God and experience no separation from Him. This must be the objective of every Sikh, of every seeker of truth. This must be the goal for every one of us. Guru Nanak Asadivar, you will know truth only when you dwell within the soul's shrine. Chapter 5 Prayer Guru Arjan, beloved, the prayer of a man of God is never fruitless. Prayer is a personal conversation with God and it is a conversation that may be diverse. It may be for physical or material needs or for spiritual upliftment. It may be to seek God's help in our hours of trial and tribulation, in sickness and in pain, in difficulties. It may be to thank God for his gifts and another day of life and to seek their continuance. It may be believing that our gain lies in resigning ourselves to his will and to implore him to grant us that we may submit to his will. It may be for the good and comfort of others. The following conditions are prerequisites for a fruitful prayer. Firm faith, in God's existence, in his power to grant the prayer and in the soundness and efficacy of our prayer. Love and reverence for God during the prayer and a pure and receptive heart. On retrospect, I find that because of my doubts, some of my prayers remain unanswered. Others received a delayed response. But I can't remember a time when, if the above conditions were met, the prayer remained unanswered. A prayer offered with a firm faith and a humble heart is so readily granted that it can leave you astounded. Prayers may be of two kinds, in the congregation and on one's own. The former has been used amongst the Sikhs since the times of the Gurus. Its uses are countless. It has played a huge role in sustaining the Sikhs. The daily congregation with reading from Guru Granth Sahib Ji, singing from Guru Granth Sahib Ji and Simran, ending with the congregational prayer to heaven, remembering the Gurus the heroic sons of Guru Gobind Singh Ji, the martyrs, both male and female, praying for the preservation of sacred shrines. The daily congregational prayer has been an incredible routine in the lives of Sikhs. The history of the Bant thus daily recapitulated, reviving old memories and traditions keeping alive the spark of Sikhism, the Sikh sense of self-respect, the Sikh tradition 
of self-sacrifice. A second type of ardas or prayer is individual. It may be in a congregation or it may be short and in one's mind. In this case, no special form pres prescribed words, special technique or rhythm is needed. Only the mind must be shaped in a humble mould. Sadhana, Bilawal, I do not come into the picture. I am nowhere. I have nothing that I can call my own. Such a prayer poured forth by the soul flies heavenward. The language of the soul is not garbled in Saronis high-pitched phrases. It is a language of thoughts. Thoughts make up the prayer. When we learn how to pray correctly, the response will be instantaneous. We will feel a feeling. There is wonder mixed with delight and actual knowledge that the prayer will be fulfilled. Individual prayer cannot possibly be prescribed for we are in varying stages of spiritual development. Guru Arjan, Gujri Var Gauri, pour forth thy heart's prayers to God, shed thy shrewdness, dedicate thyself, thy mind and body to God. Guru Arjan, Doddi, God kills all pains, he is the bestower of comforts, he who prays with faith suffers no ills.